God says. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, in thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Our thought for this morning, I had to go through it. I had to go through it. Let us pray. In this passage, after the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus begins to point out to his disciples that the law, the prophets, and the Psalms all prophesy that Christ will suffer and die. I imagine that this was hard for them to deal with when Jesus began to tell them before these things happened. For as we observe the text, we know that previous to these events happening, Jesus had already began to tell them that the Son of Man, upon reaching Jerusalem, would be turned over to the Gentiles to be beaten, to be mocked, to be crucified, that he would rise again on the third day. Yet, walking with the master and having an idea in their own mind, surely they thought he speaks spiritually. This is not a literal thing he's saying. After these things had happened, now he begins to point back. That's why in verse 44, it said, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. What you have observed is exactly what I said was going to happen. We could almost call that point number one. If Jesus said it's going to happen, look at your neighbor and say it's going to happen. If Jesus said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If it's good and Jesus said it's going to happen, then it's going to happen. And if it sounds unpleasant, if it's bad, and Jesus said it's going to happen, then my friend, you might as well stop fighting against God. It's going to happen. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with, while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled. All things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. In Genesis chapter 3, God himself spoke the very first prophecy when he said that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent and the serpent would bruise his heel. Which is to say, now we know that the woman does not bear the seed, the man bears the seed. So in that he said it would be the seed of the woman, it meant that it would not come from a man, meaning that he would be born of a virgin, it would be the son of God. The seed of the woman, the son 
of God would crush the head. The head represents headship. It represents authority. So the son of God, born of the virgin, would come and crush the authority of the serpent. We know who that serpent is. That serpent is that dragon. He is that evil one. He is the one we call Satan and the devil. So God himself in the third chapter of the book was already telling us that the son of God who would be born of a virgin would come and he would destroy the power. He would crush the authority of the devil. But it said that the serpent would bruise his heel. And in this we see that in destroying the authority of the devil that the son of God would be mortally wounded. So here we have the gospel prophesied by God himself to Adam, Eve, and that very same serpent. And that's the Torah. That is the law. In Isaiah chapter 53, it says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. That's Isaiah. That's, that's the prophets prophesying about the one who would come to deliver us out of the mess that we've gotten ourselves in. In Psalm 22, it says, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. He said, I'm surrounded by evildoers. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Not a single one of his bones was broken. He could count all of them. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. A thousand years before Jesus showed up, we already knew that that Messiah who would come, uh, that one who would be beaten with many stripes for the healing of the nations, uh, the one who would carry our chastisement upon him, we already knew that his hands and his feet would be pierced. We already knew that they were going to gamble for his garments. And when it took place a thousand years later, the people who stood there and witnessed it, they still had to have Jesus open their eyes to see it. See, that's, that's the thing about God. Nobody comes to God except the Spirit of God draw them. Uh, nobody will understand the things of God except the Spirit of God reveal it to them. Even those who stood there and saw the Word of God fulfilled, he had to point out to them uh, that these are the things that were spoken of me in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. There are over 300 prophecies concerning the Messiah, his suffering, his death, his resurrection, and his ultimate triumph. And every single word of it must be fulfilled. I thank God for that. You know why? Because he came once and he's coming again. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you see, there's a few things left for him to do. Uh, and everything the Bible said he's going to do, every word must be fulfilled. Now, the Bible said that the Holy One would come out of Bethlehem Ephrata, uh-huh, and he had to be born uh, in Bethlehem, uh-huh, because every word must be fulfilled. Uh, the Bible said, out of Egypt I have called my son. Um, so in fleeing from Herod, they had to take him into Egypt until Herod died. Uh, and then when Herod had died, uh, out of Egypt, God called his son because every word must be fulfilled. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11 said... So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Uh, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. 
things uh, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Uh, God's word can never fail. Uh, if you want to make your life sure, um, if you want to make your life strong, uh, then my brother and my sister, uh, I encourage you to build your life on the rock. Uh, which is the word of God. Uh, if you build on the rock of his word, uh, you're building on a sure foundation. Uh, you can build a life that can stand through any test, through any trial, through any tribulation, uh, if you build your life on the word uh, of God. Do I got just one witness in the house? Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 46 said, Thus it was written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer. It behoved him to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Uh, now sometimes we, we're reading and then we just skip right through these things. We don't take time to consider what do these words mean? Uh, what, is, what is this? It behoved him. Uh, that word behold means necessary, uh, which is to say it was necessary for the Christ to suffer. Uh, it was necessary uh, for the Christ to bleed. Uh, it was necessary to stand there and let the creatures who you created mock you and lie on you. Uh, can you imagine uh, Jesus is standing there. Uh, he's God in the flesh. Uh, he is the very breath that we are breathing. Uh, and the people who are breathing the breath that he supplies uh, are using that breath to spit in his face. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Just understand, uh, he didn't even have to bat an eye with simply a thought. He could just think you out of existence. Uh, but instead of fighting back, Jesus stood there and let them slap the taste out of his mouth. Can you imagine? If only these people understood who it is they're talking to. If only they understood they were looking Jehovah in the face. But the Almighty who said, let there be light, and light was. When he came in the form of a man, he let them reach over and pluck the hair out of his scalp. Can you imagine? Just before he was taken to be falsely accused, lied on, disrespected, spat on, beaten within an inch of his life, and finally crucified. Just before that, he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. The children illustrated that so beautifully for us. We saw Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane. Where it says he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Ah, uh, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Uh, Jesus was under great pain and sorrow. Uh, Jesus, knowing what was about to happen to him, uh, I want you to understand when God decided he was going to become a man, he became a man all the way. Uh, he felt everything you can feel. Uh, Jesus felt hunger. Uh, Jesus felt tiredness. Uh, Jesus experienced loneliness. Uh, he knew what it means to be betrayed by someone close to him. Uh -huh. And so knowing that he was about to be crucified, um, Jesus in his humanity said, uh, Father, if it is possible, ah, I do not like what's in this cup that I am about to drink. Ah, when I look at the ingredients that you have mixed together in this cup, all I see is sorrow. Ah, all I see is pain. 
Now, I don't want to drink this cup that you set before me. Uh, if it is possible, now, uh, oh, for a moment, uh, Jesus was contemplating if there was a way of escape from the suffering that he was heading into. Uh, he said, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But it was not possible. The cup of sorrow, the cup of suffering, the cup of sacrifice could not pass from him unless he drank the whole cup. Sometimes what God wants to bring about in your life requires that you drink the whole cup. There are some places in destiny that you can never reach unless you are willing to drink the whole cup. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be powerful in God. Uh huh. Everybody wants to be anointed. Uh, but I will have you to know and to understand uh, this ain't free. Uh huh. <laughs> the power of God on your life, uh, it does not come cheap. Uh, there is a price to be paid. Uh, you want to walk in the might of God? Uh, you want to lay hands on the sick and see them be recovered? Uh, you've got to drink the whole cup. You want to see thousands be saved? You're going to have to drink the whole cup. But Jesus, like any other man, said, the Father, I, I really don't want to have my body pierced with nails. I, I really don't want to have the flesh beaten off of my back. I, I really don't desire to suffer. I, I want the people to be saved. Because uh, Jesus said, I love them and I want them to be with me. But if there's another way that this cup pass from me, but the truth of the matter is the plan that God has to bring us to destiny is so high you can't get over it. Uh-huh. It's so low you can't dig under it. The plan of God is so wide you can't get around it. And so it was with Jesus. He had to go through it. The road to everlasting life leads through the graveyard. I want you to understand that. The road to everlasting life leads through the graveyard. No one will make it into life without going through some form of death. Uh -huh. If you want to be strong in faith and walk on the water huh, and walk right through the fire huh, and survive through the flood, the only way you're going to be able to do it is that there's got to be some water. Uh, there's got to be a fire. Uh, there's got to be a flood. Uh, the only way you can prove who Jesus is uh, is you got to go through him. There will have to be the death of your ego. There will have to be the death of your will. There will have to be the death of your plan. Uh, there will have to be the death of your dream uh, so that the will of God can live in you. Uh, so that the dream of God can live in you. Uh, so that the life of God can dream in you. Uh, yes, uh, I want you to know there's no way around it uh, because you're going to have to meet him through the graveyard. There would be no forgiveness of sins if Jesus didn't bleed. There would be no divine healing if Jesus wasn't beaten with many stripes. Uh, there would be no atonement if Jesus didn't suffer. Uh, there would be no everlasting life uh, if Jesus didn't die. Uh, 
There would be no power to live holy if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. I said he had to go through it. It was the only way he had to go through it. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 5 and 8 said that though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Uh, I said he had to go through it. Uh -huh. Now, some people would think Jesus wouldn't need to learn anything. But I told you when God became a man, he became a man just like you and I. Uh, they had to teach him how to walk. Uh, they had to teach him how to talk. Uh, they had to teach him how to be a carpenter. Uh, he had to learn how to pray. Uh, yes, he had to learn. Uh, and even after he was a full grown man uh, and the anointing of God came down like a dove on him, uh, he had to learn obedience by the things that he suffered. Because uh, you're not fit to rule uh, unless you've already been through ruin. You're not fit to be a king unless you've already been beaten down. Even Jesus had to learn by the things that he suffered. My brothers and my sisters, just like Christ, God is teaching you by the things you are suffering through. And he's producing life by the death that you endure daily. Uh, I want you to be encouraged. Uh, God has not left you, nor has he forsaken you. Uh, you might have walked away from God yourself, uh, but God ain't never walked away from you. Uh, I want you to understand the place that you're in. Uh, you don't have to stay there forever. Uh, but you might not have a quick escape because uh, there's some things in life that God has determined uh, you're going to have to go through it. Uh, I know that God will supply all of my needs um, because he allowed me to be broke. Uh, he allowed me to have no way to make it. Uh, then he made a way out of no way. Uh, I wouldn't know he could do it, uh, so I had to go through it. Uh, I know um, that Jesus will heal my body. Uh, because he allowed me to be sick. Uh, he allowed me to feel like I would never get well. Uh, then he touched me. Uh, has anybody been sick in the house? Uh, and Jesus came by uh, and he touched you in your body uh, and made you whole. Uh, I've been sick. I uh, felt like I would never get well. Uh, then Jesus touched me. Uh, I know he's a healer. Uh, and that's why I had to go through it. Somebody say yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I know that I'm stronger in Jesus because he allowed me to reach the end of my own ability and fail. He allowed me to feel my own helplessness. He showed up right on time with the answer. I know my God will make a way for you because he made a way for me and that's why I had to go through it. I know I will survive this test because he allowed me to look death in the face. He allowed me to let my connections die. He allowed my resources to die. He allowed my backup plan to die. So I had nobody else to trust in. Nobody else to depend on but Jesus. And when I had nothing left, when I was at the end of my rope, when I was at the bottom of my barrel, when I hit skid or roll, Jesus showed up and he raised me back up. I know you can come back from this. I know you can make it through this. I know you can survive. How do I know? Because he brought me through. But I wouldn't know. So I had to go through it. Look at your neighbor right now and say, I had to go through it. I'm not angry at God for the things I've suffered. I'm not bitter about the things I've been through. I don't hold a grudge against the people who have done me wrong. I thank you for talking bad about me. 
you know what you did? Huh? You pushed me closer to the Lord. Huh? Somebody ought to find the person who's been hating on you. Huh? Look them right in the eye huh? and say, thank you, Judas. Huh? You know why that is? Huh? It was Judas that put Jesus in Gethsemane. Huh? Judas sat at the table with Jesus. Huh? Judas dipped his bread with Jesus. Huh? And when Judas went to portray Jesus, huh? that's what pushed Jesus into prayer. Huh? That's what pushed him into solemn prayer. Huh? That's what placed him into holy prayer. Huh? That's what made him sweat like great drops of blood. Huh? But it was in that garden huh? where Jesus found the strength huh? to say, not my will, huh? not my will, huh? but thy will be done. Huh? So I thank you, Judas. Huh? I couldn't have got to this level huh? without your hate. Huh? I couldn't have got to this level huh? without you talking about me. Huh? I couldn't have got to this anointing huh? without you backbiting. Huh? Thank you, Judas. Huh? I had to go through it. Huh? Somebody say yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I had to go through it. Heartbreak. <laughs> I had to go through it. Pain. <laughs> I had to go through it. Loneliness. <laughs> I had to go through it. <laughs> Brokenness. <laughs> Not two nickels to rub together. <laughs> I thank God. <laughs> I had to go through it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everybody turning their back on me. <laughs> I had to go through it, but in my suffering, I find my relationship with Jesus. If you don't love me, baby, Jesus still loves me. If you won't help me, Jesus will always help me. I had to go through it to find out where my help is. I had to go through it to find out where my strength is. I had to go through it to find out the power that was on the inside of me. I had to go through it so I could stop lying. I had to go through it so I could stop fornicating. I had to go through it so I could stop being a tattletale. I had to go through it so I could turn my life around. I had to go through it so I could learn how to pray. I had to go through it so I could learn how to study. I had to go through it so I could learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. If you had to go through it and now you know that you got Jesus. If you ain't got nobody else, you ought to jump up on your feet. You ought to put your hands together. You ought to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had to go through it. But I won't let my past make me bitter. I let my past make me better. I had to go through it. I won't let my past make me ruined. I let my past make me a ruler. Because I had to go through it. I thank Jesus. Now I understand why the writer said huh, that we glory in tribulation. Huh? When I was a young Christian, I couldn't understand that. Huh? Why would I rejoice when things go wrong? Huh? But see, Paul had some wisdom. Huh? He understood every time I'm going through a pressing situation. Huh? It's only pressing the oil out of me. Huh? Yes, because huh? you can have an olive tree all day long. Huh? But you won't never have the oil huh, until there is a pressing. Huh? Something's got to be crushed out of you. Huh? Something's got to be smashed out of you. Huh? God, I thank you for my crushing. Huh? God, I thank you for smacking me down. Huh? God, I thank you for teaching me the lessons. Huh? God, I thank you for my suffering. Huh? Because it's in my suffering huh, that I learn who really got my back. Uh -huh. His name ain't mama. Uh -huh. His name ain't daddy. Uh -huh. His name ain't cousin. Uh -huh. His name ain't U.S. government. Uh -huh. His name, uh -huh. his name, uh -huh. his name uh -huh. is Jesus. Uh -huh. Somebody call his name. Jesus. Clap your hands and give him glory in the house. He's the only one. He's the only way. He's the only Savior. He's the only Lord. 
He's the only prayer answering God. He's the only one that can hold your hand and bring you out on the other side. I thank God I had to go through it. I had to go through it. Yes, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane looking around. Lord, if there's another way, let me find it. I prayed that same prayer myself. Jesus, if I can get out of this and still accomplish what you want to do in my life, let me find that way. Jesus, if I can avoid being stabbed in the back and still make it to the top of the mountain, let me find another way. But Jesus quickly recognized there ain't no other way. I've got to suffer. I've got to bleed. I've got to shed a drop of blood for their lives. I've got to shed blood for their thievery. I've got to shed blood for their adultery. I've got to shed blood for their blasphemy. I thank God that Jesus shed his blood. I thank God that Jesus loved me so much. I thank God he was willing to sacrifice for me. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. He had to go through it. Somebody ought to put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. Verse number 46 said, thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Even Christ didn't desire to suffer. Even Christ would naturally like an easier path. But my salvation, my deliverance, my destiny, your restoration, your fix, the favor of God on your life, the righteousness God wanted you to have, it meant that he had to go through it. And I thank God for that. One more time, do I have anybody who's grateful for all that God has done?